playing cards, there are four suits, right? Cups, diamonds, hearts, and spades. And in each suit, there are four picture cards, ace, king, queen, jack, and then several number cards. So total, there are 52 cards. Of course, most of you would probably know this one. So what I do is, I pick a card at random. I ask what are the chances that the selected card is spades. What is this? One by four. Right, one by four. Very good. So it is 13 by 3. If I ask what are the chances of the card is half, one by four. Little more complicated. What are the chances that the selected card is either space or hearts? Right. So it is 26 upon 52. Because out of 52 there are 26 cards. However, you said 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4, right? That's very interesting. Because you added the two 1 by 4s, right? You didn't count 26, right? So what way you do that? Well, you can add the two probabilities. Even means any set of outcomes, <laughs> if you perform an experiment, if A and B are events and the intersection is empty, then probability of A union B is the sum of the two probabilities, right? Okay. Now I will ask a little more complicated question. Given that the selected card is red, what are the chances it is a picture card? Four by four by thirteen. Right, four by thirteen. You already simplified. It is 8 by 26. Well, I will complicate by writing it as 8 by 52 by 26 by 52. 8 by 52 is simply the probability. It is red and a pictured card. 26 by 52 is simply the probability. It is a red card, right? So, the conditional probability that the card is a pictured card, given that it is red, is probability that both happen divided by that much. Therefore, here is a definition. If A and B are two events, probability of A given B is probability of A intersection B by probability of B. And I am sure some of you feel that this is below your standard, right? Not CMA standard. Okay. So, if you say A is picture card, B is red, then you precisely get this above answer, isn't it? Of course, you might ask, why do you have to follow conditional probability of A given B is probability of A in section B by probability of B, right? That's a nice question. There are several reasons, we won't go into that. Okay, this is not a force. But however, that definition tells you probability of A in section B is probability of B multiplied by probability of A given B, right? Look at that. Change that probability of B to the other side, right? Simply, I have rewritten that definition. That's it. Okay? You know, in any mathematical equation, which involves several variables, huh? when you look at the first equation, it will give you the impression as if you know those two things on this side, you can calculate that. But in any mathematical equation, okay, if you know all the variables except one, you can calculate the unknown quantity. For example, if you know this and this, you can calculate that. Okay? That looks like a meaningless thing. What do you mean if I know this? Okay. To know this, is it not necessary to know those two things? No, not necessary. We will see. Okay? So, I have written the same equation in this fashion. Alright. Now, I have a box with 20 red balls and 30 green balls. Okay. Let us play a game. I put a ball at random. I see its color. I put it back. I add one ball of that color. Okay? Simply. You can do it forever. Right? There's no end. All our life we can do that. Okay. Alright? What are the chances that the first ball is red? Right. It is 20 by 50. Okay? What are the chances that the second ball is red? Huh? What? 20 by 51. Okay. 21 by 51. Why did you say 21? Who said we added a red ball? Did I say that? I did not say that I added a red ball. 
Did I? I always said, what are the choices of second policy? Huh? So you see, I didn't say I had any dead ball. You understand what our experiment is. Okay? <coughs> Therefore, you know, mathematical rules are there, theorems, to use. Okay. We are in trouble now. You pretended that we added a red ball when I did not say that. I don't know. Depending on the first ball, I may have added a red ball, I may have added a green ball. Now when we are in trouble, we go back to theorems, rules, formulae and so on. Okay? So, the event, the second ball is red, is made up of two sub-events. Second ball is red and first is red. Second ball is red and first is green. Nothing else can happen, isn't it? That's it. Therefore, from the rule I said, P of A union B, it is equal to the sum of those two things. But how do you calculate these things? Disaster. That's very easy. Look at P of R1, R2 with P of R1 into P of R2 given R1. Remember the formula I have stated? The definition of conditional probability? Okay? As a consequence of that, probability that both happen is this. <coughs> now life is very good. What is the probability of R1? 20 by 50. What is the probability of R2 given R1? That you can calculate. That's precisely what you told me. 21 by 51. What is the probability of given? 30 by 50. What is the probability of R2 given G1? Given G1, you added a green ball. Therefore, there are still 20 red balls. So 20 by 51. What is that sum? 20 by 50 is common in both. If you add, 21 plus 30 divided by 51 is what remains? 51 by 21. Okay. So you see, the chances of red ball is still 20 by 50. <coughs> is it okay? I did not say. Simply use the two equations I mentioned. For two disjoint events, probability of union is sum of probabilities and conditional probability. Okay. If you have any questions, if you don't believe it, you ask any time, okay? Because uh, whenever somebody gives a lecture, it is to convince you of something, okay? I am already convinced. So if you are not convinced, there is no reason to not go ahead, okay? So what are the chances that the third ball is red? Again, it will be 20 by 50, okay? So let us not, you know, these are called clerical jobs, okay? If you follow the same philosophy and calculate, you will get the answer. Let us not do that here. Okay. The chances of red ball at any given draw is 20 by 50. Okay. We can prove it. How do you prove it? I am not going to prove it. Okay. It is by induction. Do you know what is induction? Mathematical induction. What is it? Huh? No. Mathematical induction means, you see, what did I say? Chances of red ball at the nth stage. It is a very complicated statement. You are supposed to prove that the chances of red ball at the third stage is 20 by 50. Chances of red ball at the fourth stage is 20 by 50. Chances of red ball at fifth stage is 20 by 50. Everything you have to prove. Okay? It is very difficult to prove all those things. Even if you write one line, for each of these, you have to write infinitely many lines, isn't it? One line for the third draw answer, one line for the fourth draw answer, one line for the fifth draw answer and so on. We don't have that much time. Okay? At the same time, we would like to say, no matter what n is, okay, chances of red ball at the nth draw is going to be Okay. So, you prove it by mathematical induction, that means you prove it by n equal to 1, Assuming that you have proved for n equals 1, 2, 3, up to k, prove it for k plus 1. That is called mathematical induction. Okay? And mathematical induction is needed because to prove infinitely many statements, you can't write infinitely many sentences. We don't have that much time. Okay? So, alright. So, but chances of red ball at every stage is 20 by 50. <coughs> then what is happening in the game? I told you to add a ball of the color you have seen. Now there are 51 balls. Now you pick one ball. Again, I have 52 balls. Something is changing, isn't it? 
Okay, so what is changing? Probability of what to given R1 is bigger than R1. Why? Because if you saw a red ball, you have added a red ball, isn't it? So there are 21 red balls, 21 by 2, that is bigger than 21 by 2. <coughs> Chances of seeing red ball increase if you spotted a red ball. Probability of R2 given G1, okay, when I wrote R2 red at the second graph, G1 green at the first graph, okay, this is less than P of R1. Why? Because if your first ball was green, you have added a green ball, so there are still 20 red balls, but total 51 balls now. 20 by 51. That is small, then 20 by 50. Right? Therefore, if you, chances of seeing a red ball decrease if you spotted a green ball. Isn't it? Okay, good. However, chances of seeing red ball on any draw is 20 by 50. <coughs> okay. So I would like to carefully understand. If you see a red ball, chances of seeing a red ball are increased. If you see a green ball, chances of seeing a red ball are decreased. However, the chances of seeing a red ball at every stage is same, 20 by 20. Doesn't change. <coughs> Why is this interesting? Why am I excited about it? Okay. Well, suppose we are going to Calcutta. Okay. Somebody tells you that there is a lot of flu in Calcutta. Okay. April flu. You don't know. All right. And if you are a very timid person, you will drop your journey, you don't go there. But however, if you think that you are not that timid, you go there. Then, <coughs> what happens? If you see a person with flu, you get up at the railway station, you see a fellow with flu, what happens? Oh my God, my friend told me there is flu, I saw this fellow, he has flu. There must be a lot of flu here. Right? Suppose you see another person with flu, what will you think? Oh my God, I saw two people, they, are, they both have flu. There must be a lot of flu here. Your mind changes, okay? You try to assign more and more probability for people having flu. On the other hand, you get up to the railway station and see a fellow without flu, what would you think? Ah, I saw this fellow, he has no flu, come on, my friend was wrong. Okay? There's no flu. Your mind changes. <coughs> However, whatever your experience is, whatever your mind does, it is nothing to do with Calcutta. In Calcutta, certain percentages have flu, that's it. Okay? Your experiences have nothing to do. So you keep on changing your ideas based on your experiences, the reality remains the same. That is what this will tell you. Okay? Beautiful. Okay, there are improvisations. You know? You can take R red balls and G green balls. Not necessarily 20 and 30. Chances of red ball at any draw is R by R plus T, isn't it? No. What if I add 10 balls of the color C instead of one ball? You, I said add one ball. You can add 10 balls. Why one ball? Exactly the same calculation. Everything remains the same. No change. Features remain same. Even if you add 10 balls of that color, the chance of red ball at any stage is 20 by 50. <coughs> exactly the same calculation. Then what has this got to do? 1 and 10 and so on. Okay? It will tell you your tension. Okay? Some people, okay, who are tense, as soon as they see a fellow with flu, they will say, oh my god, oh my god, I saw this fellow, he has flu. There must be a lot of flu here. They change their mind rather drastically towards thinking that there is a lot of flu here. Okay? On the other hand, if somebody is not that tense, he will say, okay, all right, I saw a fellow, all right, there must be more flu here. Okay? So adding 10 or 20 or 30 does not change the future. It will reflect your tensions. Okay? So you see probability reflects what you are thinking. Another question. Okay? What is the probability of R2 or G1? What is R2? Second ball is red, first ball is green. Okay? I want to know what are the chances of that. Of course, now you know. Same rule, no new rule. Probability of G1, probability of R2 given G1. Okay? Probability of G1 is G by R plus G. Probability of R2 given G1 is R by R plus G plus 1, isn't it? Because given G1, red balls are still R. 
no more. What is probability of due to R1? What is due to R1? First of all is red, second is green. Exactly the same thing. Chances first ball is red is R by R plus 3. Chances that the second ball is green given the first is red is <coughs> 2 by this. Therefore, the upshot is probability of R1 G2 is probability of G1 R2. Both are same. Alright. Now, that is profound. You could have run it in class 10. Okay. But that has a beautiful consequence. Probability of G2 given R1 is probability of G1 given R2. Both are same. Why? Now I go to the definition of conditional probability. What is the definition of the left side? Probability of G2 R1 divided by probability of R1. What is the right side? Probability of G1 R2 divided by probability of R2. Numerators are same. That is the first line. Denominators are same. Probability of R1 is same as probability of R2. We saw just now. Okay? Denominators are same. Therefore, these conditional probabilities are same. Alright? Let us see what we have. This equation tells us. Okay? Why are we excited about this equation? You see, what does the first that side tell you? Tell me what happened on day one. Ask about day two. That is what that tells you, isn't it? I am using here day as if I am doing this experiment once every day. What about the right side? Tell me what happened on day two. You are telling me on day two red ball was there. Ask about day one. You are asking, right? So, of course, you should do the same information, you should ask the same question. Okay? Nothing special about GR, you can take RR, GG, whatever you want. Okay? But you should do the same information. There you give the information, first day it was red. Here you give the information, second day it was red. Same information. But the answers are same. Both have same answers, this is time symmetry. Okay? There is a symmetry of time in this experiment. Alright, so why should I be excited about it? Okay. Similar to the following. I suppose some of you have biology, genetics and so on. Do you know about genes and genotypes? Yes. <coughs> right, very good. You know, mathematics is full of symbols. Bar doesn't mean ball. Day doesn't mean day. It is. Okay. A day could mean a generation. You observe my genotype and ask what my father's genotype could have been. Okay? So I have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So fix one pair, fix one pair and look at the genotype. Okay? On that pair for me, for my father. So you observe my genotype and ask <coughs> what could have been my father's genotype? Or you observe my father's genotype and ask what could have been my genotype. Okay? Exactly the same thing. Instead of day, this is a generation now. Okay? You observe okay, one generation, ask about previous generation or observe about that, ask about this generation. Same answer for both questions. Time reversibility. Okay? Of course, there are certain assumptions and so on and so forth, okay? But that is true in certain systems, okay? So, this is only a pointer. The same feature if you replace day 1 and 2 with day 35 or 89, doesn't matter. You can ask a question about my grandfather, okay? Given about me. Or, you take a hypothesis about my grandfather, ask about me. Same answer. <coughs> This is called polia urn model. This is due to gap to polia, Hungarian mathematician. Okay. And math is like music, you know. You can improvise ideas. Why two colors? Why not 33 colors, 44 colors? Sure, you can do that. Why add balls of that color? You can add color of opposite color. Of course, certain features won't remain the same in that case. Okay? <coughs> so you see, ah, you can change. Okay, alright. I saw a red ball. 
whenever I see a ball, I add two balls of that color, three balls of the opposite color. You can make your own. Mathematics does not prevent you from doing anything you want, okay? In real life, of course, you can't do anything you want, okay? You can't slap me, for example, right? But mathematics is beautiful, okay? More outrageous. Why pirate in many colors? You can think of infinitely many colors, okay? That has lots of practical applications, okay? But anyway, so, let us leave that polia or steam now, okay? There is a lot that can be said, okay? We can spend a couple of hours on that, but we don't, okay? Before <coughs> going to the next game, you need to learn a new word, and many of you already know that. I select a card at random. I do not, oh, you do not know the card. What are the chances? It is hearts. It is half, isn't it? That is wrong. Okay. Right. It is one by four. Okay. So, change. I, I think things got messed up here. Okay. Things got a little messed up here. Okay. All right. So let us. See. We are not right. Okay. So, since I have written something wrong there. Okay. So let me change. So, what are the chances that it is is <coughs> 1 by 30? Suppose I tell you the card I pick is space. Okay? I am prepared to give you a parking information. I won't tell you what is the card. Okay? Hmm? What are the chances it is is? 1 by 30. So, the fact that I have told you that the card is is has no influence. Right? Then you say that the two events are independent. Okay? The chances that it is A is is same as the chances <coughs> that it is A is given that it is paid. Okay? So whenever that happens, you say that the events are independent. And of course, this is also one of the concepts that we have already learned. And as you say, I have put it wrongly here. Okay. So two events A and B are independent if probability of A in section B is probability of A multiplied by probability of B. Okay? That was the definition. Why? That is same as saying probability of A in section B divided by probability of B equals probability of A. Right? That is probability of A given B is same as probability of A. <coughs> okay? The conditional probability is same as the unconditional probability. More generally, if you have n events, you say that they are independent. If whenever you get some of those events, probability that they all happen equals the product of the probabilities. Okay? Then we say that the events are independent. Don't bother about this. Okay? Sometime later, I would use the word independence. So when I say independence, you can suddenly wake up and then okay, get back to this definition. Till then, you don't have to bother. Okay. All right. So let us start another game now. Okay? I have 10 balls. Colors are important. Want to put them in two boxes. Okay? You might say, what is I put them? Okay? But that's not the point. I have a coin, chance of versus P. I shall do the following. I take a ball, cast a coin. Heads up, I'll put it in box 1. Tails up, I'll put it in box 2. I repeat with the second ball. I repeat with the third ball and so on. Okay? So what am I doing? I take this ball. I toss my coin, whatever the coin tells, I put hex, box one, tail, box. Then take another ball, toss the coin. Okay? I keep on tossing once per each ball. Okay? Very simple experiment. How many balls are there in box one? Hex, box one. Huh? Any question? Okay. How many balls are there in box one? Okay? They can't say. They can't say. Huh? They can't say. You can't say. Very good. It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It could be anything. We can't say. Okay? If I ask you how many balls do you have, you will say quickly. Okay? 0, 1, 2, and so on. But how many balls are there in box 1? You can't say. You are absolutely right. So what is it that we can say? We want to say something, right? So, x is 
is the number of balls in box 1, find probability x is equal to k, for k equals 0, 1, 2, correct? Okay. These are binomial probabilities. Probability x equal to k is 10 choose k, p power k, 1 minus p power 10 minus p. Why? Because k balls are put in box 1 if in your 10 tosses, there were heads k times, isn't it? Okay? Some of you have already learned binomial probability, some of you have not. Okay? So, there will be k balls in box 1 if you have got k heads in the 10 tosses. Okay? And chances of getting k heads in 10 tosses is this way. Why? Because when you toss a coin 10 times, what is the outcome? It is a sequence of heads and tails, isn't it? Length 10. What is the probability of that outcome? Okay? If it consists of all heads, it is to the power of 10. Why? Because the probability of a h h h p is probability of a, multiplied by probability of which second time, multiplied by probability of which third time, and so on. Independence comes into picture. Okay? p to the power of 10. Suppose I get the outcome, t, h, 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 only t and all the other negatives. What is the probability of that outcome? It is 1 minus p times p times p times p and so on. It is 1 minus p into p power. So, if you want exactly 4 heads, look at all the outcomes where there are exactly 4 heads. How many such outcomes are there? 10 choose 4. Each outcome has the same probability p power 4 into 1 minus p power 10 minus 4. Okay? Therefore, probability of this event is given by that formula. Okay? Alright. Life gets a little complicated. I have three points. Chance of pressure p1, p2, p3. Select one of these points at random. Use that point to put all the balls as earlier. I am not selecting one coin each time. I select one of the coins that is power. Use that coin to do exactly as earlier. Okay? All the 10 balls I want to distribute using this coin. Okay? Other two coins are gone. Agree? Now I want to know what is the probability x is equal to k. What do you think would that be? Hmm? Put p1 separately plus p2 plus p3. Plus okay. <laughs> but will you add all those things or? <laughs> if you add, will that do? What did you add? It is average. You are right. You are absolutely right. It is the sum of all these things, but not exactly the sum, but the average. Okay. Why? x equal to k is the union of three sub-events. Again, disjoint. I am going to use that formula. x equal to k and point 1 is selected. x equal to k and point 2 is selected. x equal to k and point 3 is selected. Nothing else can happen, isn't it? You could not have selected point 1 and 2 simultaneously. Okay. So, this event is the union of these three disjoint sub-events. Okay. Therefore, by the formula, I stated only for 2, but doesn't matter, for 3 let us use it, okay? It is the sum. And what is that equal to? That is equal to the average of these 3 things. Why? Because, what is the probability of this? Again, use that formula, okay? Probability of this multiplied by probability of this given this, isn't it? What is the probability that point 1 is selected? One third. What is the probability x equal to k given point 1 is selected? It is that. Agree? So, one third of that is precisely this number. Similarly, this is one third of second thing. This is one third of third <coughs> I don't pull out any new formulae. Only those two formulae we have seen on this right earlier. Nothing more. Okay? So, this is one third of the third. Okay? So, that is why it is average of those three things. <coughs>
we have one coin per each bit. Take every number p between 0 and 1, I have one coin for that. If you cast that coin, chance of price is Okay? Agreed? So there is a coin for which chance of price is half, fair coin. There is a coin for which chance of price is one third. There is a coin for which chance of price is one by root two. I have many coins. Okay? Use that coin to put all the balls. Pick one of these coins at random and use that coin. So I have a bucket of coins here. I pick one coin at random. Use that coin. You don't select again another coin. Select one coin at random. Use that to distribute all the 10 balls. Okay? You understand? Of course. <coughs> you understand because you are too polite. You don't want to ask the question, is this question meaningful? <laughs> it looks very silly. How can you have so many coins? Okay? But doesn't matter. Let us ask. These are all theoretical questions. Okay? And in fact, is it necessary to have coins in a box? It is not necessary. The set of all numbers between 0 and 1 are already there. Take <coughs> one number at random. That's all. You don't need coins. Okay? Only when you select a number at random from 0 to 1, you get that number, then you say, okay, I will take a coin whose chance of persist. You don't need all the coins before you. Okay? Select a number at random. Alright? You know, these thought experiments, physicists, are masters of it. Okay? So you should also develop this attitude. It doesn't matter, don't bother. You know, the other day, Ishan Sharma has done very well in our test in England, right? So ask yourself, suppose Ishan Sharma, he is supposed to be a very fast bowler, isn't it? He took a run with 200 kilometers per second and threw the ball at a speed of 200 kilometers per second. Then will it go to the batsman at 400 kilometers per second? I don't know. He can't run that fast. He can't throw that fast. Forget about it. <coughs> as far as your thought is concerned, you can do anything you like, right? Do it. You can do that. Will it happen? I don't know. Okay, you think about it. Yeah. So, this person is meaningful. As I said, you don't have to have so many coins. You pick a number at random from 0 to 1. That's it. Take one coin whose transfer person. Then, probability x equal to k is again the average of all these numbers. If you selected a coin with <coughs> chance of s is p, then getting exactly k heads has this probability. Isn't it? So earlier, I have taken average of three such quantities. Now, I have to take average of all these quantities. What is meant by average of all these quantities? If you have 10 numbers, okay? You add them, divide by 10. If you have 1000 numbers, add them and divide by 1000. But I have one number per every p between 0 and 1. What is meant by that average? Okay, believe me for the time being, it is simply the integral. Okay? Now why do you have to believe and so on? That's a different matter. Okay? At this moment, let us simply take this one. You know, you can do it with Riemann sums and so on. Okay? But we don't want to do all that. Okay. What is this integral? Can you tell me? You can integrate this, okay? Some of you have learned integration. If you integrate, you will get 1 by 11. Okay? Beauty. Absolute beauty. K disappears. Okay? Suppose you took K equal to 10. What would this be? 10 to step per get. 1 minus 2 to the power of this, what that? P to the power of 10. Isn't it? Integral of P to the power of 10 is P to the power of 11 by 11, right? 0 to 1, 1 by 11. Suppose k equal to <coughs> 9, this is t power 9, 10 choose 9, okay, forget 10, keep it outside. p to the power of 9, 1 minus p to the power of 10 minus 9, that is 1, p to the power of 9 into 1 minus p, integrate by parts, okay? You have learned integration by parts? Doesn't matter. Otherwise, p to the power of 9 into 1 minus p is p to the power of 9 minus p to the power of 10. Integrate separately. You will get 1 by 11. Okay? Therefore, you will get the answer 1 by 11. Moral. Chances of k balls does not depend on k. 
all occupancies are equally likely. Okay. So I pick a coin at random. Okay. And then use that to distribute this ball. Then the chances of <coughs> no ball at all in box 1 is 1 by 11. Chances of 1 ball in box 1 is 1 by 11. Chances of 2 balls in box 1 is 1 by 11. Everything is 1 by 11. Okay. Why are we excited about it? Okay. Of course, change disappears. You should be excited about it. Okay. <coughs> Something that appears and bothering us disappears. We should be very happy. But there is more to it. Okay. Let me explain what is more to it. Then we will see why this is more interesting than it appears. Okay. Pretend all the balls look alike. Okay. There are 10 balls. So all the balls you collect. Imagine that there are <coughs> 10 cricket balls. You can't distinguish one from the other. Okay? They all you collect. You are not supposed to put marks on them. How many arrangements of the balls can you distinguish <coughs> or recognize? So, careful. There are 10 balls. All of them are looking alike. There are two boxes. I put the 10 balls in the two boxes. How many arrangements? Can your eye distinguish? You cannot ask, which ball went into box 1? Which ball went into box 2? Why can't you ask the person? Because which ball doesn't make sense. All balls are looking alike. If you have put numbers on them, you can ask, where did ball 1 go? Where did ball 2 go? And so on. But since there are no numbers, all look alike. If I put the 10 balls in the two boxes, the only thing your eye can recognize is how many balls are in the box one. Nothing more than that. Okay? If I have put this ball in box one, all the other nine there, or I took that ball and put it in box one, all the other nine there, these two arrangements will be the same ball. Because you don't know which ball was in box one. Okay? So carefully understand. If there are ten balls all looking alike, if I put in two boxes, okay? The only thing your eye can distinguish is how many are there in box 1. There are 11 such arrangements. Pretend all arrangements are equally likely. Okay. Pretend that these arrangements are equally likely. There are 11 arrangements that are equally likely. So therefore the chances of 0 balls is 1 by 11, chances of 1 ball is 1 by 11, so you get the same answer. Is that it? standing at the door, there are two energy levels, they want to walk in and sit in one of those energy levels. Okay? How do they do it? Right? So, these are called both Einstein statistics, proposed in 1924, and uh, both proposed this in this fashion. Pretend all photons look alike. Okay? So, here is a question. There are 10 photons there sitting, there are two energy levels. How do these photons distribute themselves in the two energy levels? Okay? So, both said, pretend that all the balls, photons look alike. Pretend that all arrangements that your eye can distinguish are equally like this. Then you have that answer one by eight. Okay? And why are these proposals revolutionary? As you know, when SN both proposed this, nobody accepted. You know, there are fundamentalists all over. They don't want to change. Even in science, there are. Okay? So, I have a box with one red ball and 9,999 green balls. Okay? Except for color, all balls look alike. Okay? <coughs> I have a box with 10,000 balls. One red and others ball at random. What are the chances it is red? Okay? If you accept the earlier proposal, you should say, aha, there are only two outcomes. 
because all green balls look alike. You can't tell me which green ball have you selected. Right? <coughs> so, if you look at the outcomes of this experiment, if you pretend as Bose was suggesting, okay, there are only two outcomes, red ball, green ball, like this. Right? You can't ask which green ball is selected. <coughs> Therefore, probability of red equal to probability of blue equal to half, there are only two outcomes. They are equally right. Do you believe it? No. Nothing short of crazy. Okay? If you have one red ball, 9999 green balls, if you try to pretend all balls look alike except for color, and the outcome that you write and distinguish are equally likely, then you end up with this answer. This is nothing short of crazy. Okay? You all believe, we all believe that the chance of green ball is very high. It is more likely you will get a green ball than a red ball will be right. Quite true. But that is why people did not accept. Okay? But however, what happens in the following? Photons do obey that rule. You can't help it. You are nobody to control them. Okay? So you have to learn to understand from them rather than trying to control them. Okay? So the proposals given what? <coughs> to explain what we have seen, okay? So that is what made it very interesting. Okay, like, as I keep on saying, in mathematics, a simple basic idea is given. You can keep on improvising. What if I have more than 10 balls? What if I have more than two boxes? So oh, sure, you can do that. You can have N balls and R boxes, okay? You can have N photons. There are R energy labels, okay? The n photons are getting distributed into the R energy levels. Okay? How do they distribute? So you can similar analysis, but it is a little tricky and so on. You know, integration. You have to integrate several variables and so on. Let us not go to that. Okay, now I think I will go to another game and then I will stop. Okay. So Professor Bunny, you can tell me if I am exceeding my time, okay? Five minutes? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, fine. We started at 10.30. So oh, okay, fine. So I can go, I'll now go to another game. Okay? I have 10 balls, number 1 to 10. Okay? As you see, I am playing very simple games. Okay? I have only 10 balls. Alright. I have two boxes, H and C. On day zero, <coughs> I put the balls in the two boxes. Well, it doesn't matter, okay? You can put the two balls in box H and the remaining eight in box C or etc. Okay? Or you can toss a coin. If the coin comes up heads, I will put five boxes, five balls here, five balls here. If it comes up tails, I put four balls here and six there. Well, doesn't matter. Every day I do the following. Pick a number at random from one to ten. Take the ball from wherever it is, move it to the other box. Okay, there are no balls outside. There are the two boxes, H and C. <coughs> Remember, balls are numbered. Okay? Forget about that both sides time story. That's over. Okay? There are no numbers there. Now there are numbers. Okay? Different story. Okay. So pick a number at random from 1 to 10. Look at the box. That ball may be here, <coughs> then put it in this box. That ball will be here, then put it in that box. Okay? That's what I do every day. Okay? Of course, you might think very crazy. Why the hell is he doing this? Doesn't matter, interesting games. We don't have to spend any money. <coughs> okay? So, you can play this forever. What happens in the long run? Okay? We go, now, we go back to how it was originally. We will go back to how it was originally. Uh -huh. Okay. So, now let's see. You will surely see three balls in box H many, many, many times. You will surely see nine balls in box H many, many, many times. You will surely see nothing in box 8 many, many, many times. 
when you keep on doing this process, okay, infinity many times, I said this is unending, right? You can do whatever. Keep on doing it. Okay? Infinitely many times, you see nothing in box one. It's infinitely many times, you see exactly three balls in box eight. Everything happens. So you think that there is a chaotic motion going, right? Many times there are three balls here. After three balls, there must be ten balls. After ten balls, again three balls. Somewhere four balls. So you see, if you look at the balls in box H, list them. Day one, how many are there? Day two, how many are there? Day three, how many are there? You get that sequence. In that sequence, infinitely many times you will find zero. In that sequence, infinitely many times you find one. <coughs> infinitely many times you find two. Okay? This can be proved. Now we have reached a state where I am not calculating. Proof of this is going to be very difficult. Okay? But not too difficult, you know? Okay. The system is in some sense approaching a steady state. You know, in the long run what happens? In the long run the following happens. As if somebody has put the balls at random. You know, take the 10 balls, you toss a clay coin, see how many heads it gets, so many you put, then pass it. Okay. So let me explain again here. Forget about all the experiment. Okay? So here, here are 10 balls. I take a pay coin. Hmm? I toss the coin 10 times. See how many times I get hits. So many I put in box H and others I put in box C. The remaining. That is what happens in the long run. Okay? Now, things are getting a little fuzzy now. Okay? I am using unknown words, long run. This happens, okay? It is more like astrology rather than anything. So let me explain. So today I put certain number of balls, okay? In box H. Tomorrow you can write down how many balls are there in box H, okay? Huh? Day after tomorrow you can write down. <coughs> when I say you can write down, everything depends on chance. Therefore, you can write down the distribution, okay? If you write the distributions on day 1, day 2, day 3, they convert, okay, in some sense. And that will be the binomial 10 half probabilities, okay, binomial 10 half, okay. But these two look contradictory, isn't it? On the one hand, the system seems to be moving chaotically, right? If you look at the number of balls in box H, Look at the list on day 1, day 2, day 3. You will see 0 infinity many times, 1 infinity many times, okay? <coughs> System seems to be moving chaotic, but it is reaching the steady state. You know? H stands for hot, C stands for cold. When Goldman was trying to explain, okay, thermodynamics, heat as a result of motion, okay? If you take hot water, and cold milk or doesn't matter, then you put them together. What is happening? Okay? There is nothing like calorific which escapes and so on. Okay? The hot water molecules are moving pretty fast and cold milk molecules are moving pretty slow. When you put them together, they bump into each other, hit each other and so on. Okay? Whenever a hot molecule hits a cold molecule, certain energy is exchanged. Okay? So this steady state is what you see ultimately. There is a steady temperature reach, isn't it? It cools down and so on. That is what you see. Okay? But at a microscopic level, the other thing also happens. Okay? It is just like all the air in this room, it keeps on floating around. Suddenly we will go to that corner, then we will all be suffocated here, right? There is a chance, but that doesn't happen. Okay? So, this was discovered by this is known as Aaron Best Earl model, okay, Paul Aaron Best, okay. There was a great controversy because of the two <coughs> statements I wrote on the board. People said these are nonsense, they are contradictory. But Aaron Best came up with this beautiful model to say that these two contradictory statements, 
contradictory looking statements are not actually contradictory. At the microscopic level, okay, things are moving chaotically, but at the macroscopic level, a steady state is reached. Okay? And what to see is only the macroscopic level. Alright? So that is uh, the other game. There are a lot of things that you can say about uh, this model. There are several other interesting models. Okay? There is another beautiful model that Ten Shaker proposed, okay, astrophysicist, but that involves Wassa probabilities and so on. And I am not quite sure whether you will be comfortable with the Wassa probabilities, so I have not brought that. So there are many other interesting things. Okay? So there are just simple games to convince your knowledge. Okay? All right. So what I want to say finally and conclude is the following probability theory is simple. It helps in building models and understanding complicated phenomena. Okay? In the first thing we have discussed about genetics or uh, infectious diseases and so on and their freedoms. And they are complicated phenomena. is a complicated phenomenon. It is essential. Probability is essential. If you have See, remember yesterday's talk, okay? Ram Das sir, he was uh, talking about graph and going at random, random walk, he said. And then the Hema madam, she was saying hidden Markov models, okay? So, you make some noise. I have to find out what is that noise, I have to identify it. There are several choices, okay? So, I put a probability to identify what you say. And then uh, Prabha madam, she was uh, of course talking about probability, amplitude and so on. You see, now the three lectures we have seen. So, it is essential. Okay? Of course, in the next lecture you won't see probability. Okay. Alright? Most important is fun. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions,